All right, so long division is one tool that we have in order to um, factor and divide polynomials and stuff like that. But we have another tool available to us, okay? <clears throat> and that is called synthetic division. So let's take a look at that here. <coughs> Synthetic division is kind of like a shortcut for long division, okay? Um, so the, one, the benefit of synthetic division is that you can do it more quickly than you do long division, mm -hmm. but one of the constraints with synthetic division is that you can't use it for every single division problem that you run across, okay? So that's one thing we do want to be careful with. Um, <coughs> synthetic division, so this is like an important note here, so note, Synthetic division can only be used to divide polynomials by a divisor of the form x minus k. <clears throat> okay. Synthetic division can only be used to divide polynomials of the form x minus k. So, for number three on our homework from Friday, could we have used synthetic division? Yes or no? And number three, what were we dividing by? Or what was our divisor here? The x minus four. Is that in the appropriate format to use synthetic division? Yes. Yeah, it's x minus k, right? A number. Perfect. We could have used synthetic division there. Sorry. I'll show you how to do it today and you can use it in the future. Number nine. Could we have used synthetic division for number nine? No. Our divisor here is not of the form x minus k. It's x squared plus 2x minus 4. So number 9, you have to use long division. That synthetic division won't work there. All right? Sadly. So what is synthetic division? How does it work? So synthetic division, like I said, is a shortcut. Okay? It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like learning how to do long division all over again, but just in a different way. So let me show you. We'll start with an example here. So let's say that we want to divide um, f of x equal to uh, x cubed plus 5x squared uh, minus 7x plus 2 by x minus 2. So we're going to divide x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 by x minus 2. And so again, can we use synthetic division in this case? Yes, right? x minus 2 is our divisor, so that's in the form x minus k. Okay. So here's how we set up our synthetic division. And different teachers will set this up in slightly different ways. So if you've seen synthetic division before from another teacher, or if you see it again later in the future, it might look slightly different, but the basic setup is always the same. You always start with <coughs> the thing that you are dividing by, x minus two, okay? And when you then write that down, you use the zero. So not the factor x minus two. What would the zero be of x minus two? Two, right? A positive two. A positive two would then subtract two and give you a zero there. So we're going to use the two and we're going to put in like a little box there. Half a box. Okay? <clears throat> so again, I'm going to kind of like draw this here.
Okay, that says plug zero in. Plug the zero in there. Okay. Or you can think of it just as the opposite, right? We have x mi we're dividing by x minus two, so it's a positive two that goes in that little box. Okay, if we were dividing by x plus seven, that'd be a negative seven that goes in the box. Right, opposites. Then these right here, we're gonna put some more numbers down. And we're gonna put a one, a five, a negative seven, and a two. And where where do I get those numbers from? Yes, from the function there, they're the coefficients, okay? In order and include placeholders. We didn't need any placeholders here, right? because we went from x cubed down to x squared down to negative seven x plus two. And so you, we don't have to worry about any placeholders there. <clears throat> okay. Leave about a line's worth of space. We're gonna write some more numbers below these. And put like a little, you know, bar there. So leave enough space to put some numbers down in here. <clears throat> So this is all set up. This is how we set up long division. We have, we're not, we have, or sorry, synthetic division. We haven't done the synthetic division yet. This is just the setup for it. <coughs> okay, this is just the setup. And so then this is how we, so any questions on just the setup, actually? Any questions just the setup? All good? So this is how we actually do synthetic division. You start by bringing down that one there, okay, then you take this, this number here and you multiply times a two, okay, so one times two, two, and then the answer goes right here. So something like this, one times two, two. And then now we have a five and a two here, we add these. Is that what you're gonna say? Carlos, yeah, we add. You remember now? So we add the five and the two to make seven. And then we do the seven times the two. I'm not gonna keep drawing arrows, it'll get too messy, but seven times the two is 14. So 14 goes here. Negative seven plus 14 is seven. <clears throat> 7 times 2 is 14 again, but 2 plus 14 now is we have, so 16. <clears throat> We've run out of numbers, right, so we stop. All right. This number is the remainder. That's the remainder. Okay. So, so in other words, does x minus 2 evenly divide the function? No, because we have a remainder, right? We have a remainder. So what? It would be, yeah, if the remainder was 0, that would indicate then that they, they do evenly divide. All right, now, what do we do with these other numbers? 1, 7, 7, what does it mean? Well, what was the degree of the original function that we divided? What was the degree of the original function that we divided? It's 3, cubed, right? It's cubic. So this is our answer to this division, right? But just you lower the degree by one. Again, these were the coefficients of the original thing that we were dividing, right? So there's one x cubed, five x squared, minus seven x plus two. These are the coefficients of our answer just lowered by one degree. So instead of starting a cube, we're gonna start at x squared. So this becomes one x squared plus seven x, plus 7, and then plus 16 over our x minus 2 there. And there it is. That's it. That's how you do the long the synthetic division. Yeah, if you just want to put x squared, that'd be fine. Yep, yep. You can put just 1 x squared or x squared. Or, or just x squared. So, 
one degree, right? Which should make sense because what did we do? We took cubic and we're dividing it by an x minus two. So, so it's yeah, it's kind of like taking away that one power of x. We're dividing out a single power of x, so it goes out of x. So that's it. Though. That's it. Okay. Questions on any of that? All right. Let's try another one. Let's try another one. All right. Well, let's do. Um, Let's divide f of x equal to x squared plus x minus 17 by mm, x minus 4. <coughs> you will divide f of x equals x squared plus x minus 17 by x minus 4. So, let's do our setup here again. What's the number that's going to go in the box here? Positive 4. Right. X minus 4 is the factor, what we're dividing by, but 4 is the 0, okay, the root there. Very good. And then what are our numbers are going to go across the top here? 1, 1, negative 17. <coughs> For the 1x squared plus 1x minus and again, we'll just draw, leave some space, draw a little line underneath there, okay. and we'll drop this one down. You don't have to draw this little arrow there. I'm doing it right now just so you guys can see it. I mean, you, can, you don't have to draw it in there. Okay, put the one there, and then we can just start doing our little um, algorithm. One times four is four. One plus four, five. Five times four is 20. 20 plus negative 17 is three. You always do the number here times the 4, it goes here, and then you add these up. And then 5 times the 4 goes here, add them up. And so then this 3 is the what? Remainder. The remainder. <clears throat> and so our degree was a degree of 2, now it should be a degree of what? 1. So it will be 1x or just x, yep, plus 5, and again plus 3 over x minus 4. Okay? which we shouldn't be surprised because that is exactly what we got when we did it for the homework. Okay? So I did this one just to show you that in fact synthetic division and long division yield the same result in this case, right? Because you can use either one. Okay, it's rather good. Mm -hmm. Say again? Yeah, 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 we'll, we'll do some more here, yep. Oh yeah, we'll try some more. See if I can come up with something better. <coughs> Let me see here if I've got a good one. Hmm, I can just make one up too. Okay. Yeah, I got one here for us. Alright, let's try. Let's say uh, divide f of x equal to. Mm, There you go. X cubed minus 64. Okay. By uh, X minus 4 again. Let's divide F of X equal to X cubed minus 64 by X minus 4. Okay. So, what's the number that goes in the box here? 4. What will our numbers be that go across here? 1 and negative 64? Yes, with a but. What about the x squared term? Or the x term? They're missing. We need to put a 1 and then a 0 because there's no x squared term, there's no x term, and then there's the negative 64 constant. So if it's an x cubed by itself, you have to include the other powers? We want to get all the powers like so whatever your highest power term is if you don't have like the whatever lower powers you're missing you then want to put a zero in place oh, so like say 
Right. Correct, correct. I mean, technically, if you wanted to, we could put in the front of this thing 0x to the 4th, 0x to the 5th, 0x to the 6th, so on and so forth. But you don't need to do that, right? We're only worried about the highest power and then any missing powers between that and the constant. Even the constant, if there was no constant, you want to put a 0 in there, too, at the end. But in this case, since it's x cubed, we need a 0 for the x squared, a 0 for that x, because there isn't one, right? Either of those. And then the negative 64. And so again, we'll put a little line underneath. Okay. <clears throat> And we'll drop down the 1, and then just do it. 1 times 4, 4. 0 plus 4, 4. 4 times 4, 16. 0 plus 16, 16. 16 times 4, 64. Negative 64 plus 64, 0. So they evenly divide. So when we do that division, we get then... Well, the degree of our original function was... 3, so what's the new degree going to be? Squared, or 2, yeah. So it'll be 1x squared, or just x squared, plus 4x, plus 16. And then we'll have a remainder, remainder 0. So that's just it. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it divides evenly. Which means, which means, if I have x to the third minus 64, that is equal to x minus 4 times what other thing? X squared plus 4x plus 16. Yes. We can use this to help us factor, right? So now we have one more strategy, one more kind of tool to add to the way we factor things. What's the problem with this method, though? Well, Correct. If it doesn't like divide evenly, right, it may not work. Right. <clears throat> when we go to factor polynomials, so for example, when I give you guys just like a random polynomial and I ask you to factor it, do I tell you what it factors to be? Or what to factor out of it? Do I tell you what to factor out of it? No, I just say factor this thing, right? In these problems, I'm giving you, though, something to factor it by, right? I'm telling you divide this thing by this. I'm telling you what to divide by. So synthetic division and long division, they only help us with factoring if we already kind of have an idea about what we're going to divide out in the first place. If we have no idea, we're going to sit there guessing and checking for forever, really, right? If we're bad guessers. Or even if we're good guessers, we might not. You know, it might take a lot of time to do. Okay. Um, so, I'm just excited to be here, I guess. Okay? So, we will develop later, like I think the next time we're in school, a method for coming up with a limited number of guesses um, to figure out whether something you know, factors that way or not. Okay? Let's try another one. Oh, darn it. They give me a stupid thing. Oh, well. We'll do it again. This is... Let's try another one here. <coughs> So let's use this idea of factoring then to try and figure out, or try and fact. Let's try and use this now as a tool of factoring. Okay, so let us change the directions a little bit. Let's now factor f of x equals 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 28x minus 16. <coughs> given sorry there you go thank you uh, given that x plus 2 is a factor oops I'm off the screen there we go okay. so we're going to factor that polynomial given that x plus 2 is a factor So first of all, let's just consider this polynomial. What other strategies might we want to try and use here? If we were to come across this polynomial that's got in the wild, right, a wild polynomial appears, what, what might we try to factor this? What, what strategies, what tools might we try and use here? For example, is there a GCF to factor out here? 
No, unfortunately not. Right? That, that the 4, the 28, and the 16, they would all divide by 2, but the 3 does not divide by 2, so we can't factor out a GCF of a number. Um, and they all don't have an X, right? The first three terms have an X, but 16 does not. So GCF doesn't work. What about factoring by grouping? Would that be a possibility here? Possibly, right? So let me just show you. If we do a 3X cubed uh, minus 4X squared, and we group that, minus 28X minus 16, we group that, well, we can factor out an X squared from here, leaving behind 3X minus 4. Here we can factor out um, hmm, a 2. Oh, no, sorry, a 4. 7x minus 4. But you can see that even though we can factor this by grouping, these are not the same, and so we're kind of stuck here, right? We don't really, the factor by grouping is not helpful. It works, but it's not helpful because we don't have the same thing to then factor. So, so now, right, last, last thing, last resort, right, we're going to try this synthetic division, see if it works, okay? We're told that x plus 2 is a factor, though, so that's going to be helpful. You can, either, you can either divide the x plus 2 out using long division or synthetic division. It's up to you. Let's use synthetic division since that's what we're practicing now. So what goes, what goes in the little box here? Negative 2 goes in the box. Right, remember, it's the opposite of the, of the factor there. So it's x plus 2 is x minus, or it's negative 2. Okay. And then what numbers are going to go across the top here? Well, 3, negative 4, negative 28, and negative 16. <coughs> okay. The test will be the day after the next day that we're back in school. Okay. So you'll come back for whatever day that is, and the day after that will be the test. All right, thank okay? you. Good luck, guys. We'll see you. All right. So back on track here. <coughs> All right. Let's do this. So we drop the 3 down. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 4 plus negative 6, negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 2, 20, positive. Negative 28 plus 20, negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2, positive 16. <gasps> it better get a zero there, right? Because they told us, they, the book, I told you, that it's a factor. So we better get a zero there, right? We better. And we did. All right, so what does that leave us with? Well, we have then, what will this thing be? 3x to the what? Squared, or to the 2, yep. Mm-hmm, minus 10x, minus 8. Right, so now we can say, aha, so we can say that f of x, right, is equal to 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 28x minus 16, and that's the same thing as saying that x plus 2 times that 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Right? It's the same thing. Have we factored this thing as much as we possibly can? Right, right. This quadratic here may factor further. This thing here may factor further. So, we should try and keep it factors. Okay? Because the direction said to factor. And mo mo more often it'll say factor completely. Right, so not just pull out one thing, you want to divide it up as much as you can. So the x plus 2 won't divide up anymore, but this could. So let's use our little x here. Okay, so what's the number that goes up in the numerator, or not in the numerator, up top here? Negative 24, right, 3 times a negative 8 there, so negative 24. What goes down here? The negative 10. So are there two numbers that multiply to give us negative 24, but add to give us negative 10? So negative 6 and negative 4 do add up to make a negative 10, but they're going to multiply and give us a positive 24. 
So there it is, yes, both of you guys, right. Negative 12, positive 2. Okay, right. Now what do we do with those negative 12s and 2s, the negative 12 and 2 though? It's got to divide by 3, right? We multiply that 3 back to get that negative 24. got to divide by that 3 then. And that gives us a negative 4 there. And then 2 thirds doesn't simplify any further. So we're going to get x plus 2. We'll have x minus 4. And then that 2 thirds becomes 3x plus 2, right? Now if you'll just forgive me here, I just want to check to make sure we did do it right. So let's see here, 3x times the x will give me 3x squared. 3x, sorry, 3x times minus 4 gives me minus 12x, but then plus 2x. So minus 12 plus 2 will give me negative 10, and then negative 4 times 2 will give me negative 8. So aha, I know I did it right. And now it's back completely. Okay. Potentially, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Good job. Yes. Sure. When we factor a quadratic using this like magic x technique thing, the lead, if we have a lead coefficient here, we multiply it back to the last number. Three times negative eight gives us that negative twenty-four, and then the middle term is done just right here. Okay. That's it. Okay. So there it is. All right. Let me give you guys, let me give you guys one to try here. Okay? <coughs> so I'll give you similar directions here. Let's have you factor f of x equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 12 completely. Okay, we're going to have you factor complete given given that x minus 4 is a factor. Okay, given that x minus 4 is a factor. Back to that polynomial, and I'll try and leave the other one up there so you guys can see the other one too. But factor f of x equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 12 completely, given that x minus 4 is a factor. Okay. So, question? No, I'm just looking at the right now. Oh, okay. Do you have a password for what you're talking about? No, I just, I'm just looking at the study, but. Oh, understood. Like, I got you. Yep, 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 yep. They sent us an email, so you're good. Uh, if you check the Google Classroom, I'll have. Well, hmm, I'll take a picture of the of the book page. That way you can get it, because otherwise you won't have it. So. Okay. I'll do that. Yes, I can do that. Give that a try. Factor complete.
synthetic division here, so it gives me five and zero. Calculations themselves aren't that difficult, but when you have to do so many of them and it's, you know, a certain, a certain way, you can it. okay, it'll, it'll, it'll throw you off. So you gotta be careful, be meticulous. Pay good attention to detail. Don't miss anything. One more minute here, one more minute. I'm gonna go over Because I feel like, to me, yeah, uh, I don't know. There are other teachers I'm sure that use it in a more creative way, but yeah. Plus, I don't like, yes, I feel like it's just not as precise. Like, there are times I think when teachers like write and, and like, and and like, like, like the computer will hang up and it'll go like that. And like, that's like recalibrating the whole time. Yeah. Because I'm like, eh. Eh. Yes, transparency. Yeah, that's what I used to use back in the day. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could like lick your finger and then to like get, you know erase something or whatever. Yep, yep, yep. No, I'm, I like I like this technology. I like the document cameras and the and the projectors. They're nice. I was at Walker's Rock. It's cool before open. Mm -hmm. 
And that was like that was we we, we all have document cameras stuff like this too. I was um I was the, like it was like mm, the mid two thousands and that I had projector. What's that? This is my tenth or eleventh year of teaching. So you're talking ten years essentially. I think. So. Which school's better? Yeah. I like them different for different reasons. Uh, how's that for an answer, huh? What's that? I definitely feel like I'm much more spoiled here than I was at Walkersville. But I have I have a very nice schedule too. I mean I can't you know, I can't complain. So yeah, I feel spoiled. Yes, Josh, you have a question? Yeah, so we're gonna go over the question right now and then you can see we'll see what you think when we go over, okay? So Jake, help us out here. What goes in the box? A four. Good. Okay, and then what goes across the top here? One, negative six, five, and twelve. That's right. Watch the signs of those coefficients too. Okay, we don't want to forget about them. All right, and then uh, let's see. How about um, Miranda? How do we go from here? What do we do? One down. Times four. And that makes, what's negative 6 plus 4? Negative, negative 2. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Negative and negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Yeah. We better get a 0, right? Ms. Wimmeyer told us that was a factor, so it better work. And it does. So that means that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 12. Right? But we got to interpret this answer. So to interpret it, let's go to Katie. Katie, what... Does the what do these numbers mean? What is what's what is it? Yeah. X squared minus two x minus three. Lovely. So that means this polynomial here factors to x minus four times x squared minus two x minus three. Okay. So Josh, so far so good. Does that making sense? Oh, if you did it right. Okay. So Josh, were you able to get this to factor? Yes. Yes. So it's going to be x minus 3, x plus 1. And so there it is, fully factored. Okay? Okay. Make sense now, though, so? Yeah. So, so the purpose, right, so, so the beauty of this is that if we have a polynomial and we can come up with a factor that works, we can then reduce the power of that polynomial. So once we get down to a quadratic, we don't need to keep guessing and checking anymore. We can just see if it factors. If it factors, then we factor it. If it doesn't, then we're done, right? We know where we stop, okay? So that's the nice thing, all right? So with a cubic, for example, we only need to come up with one factor, and that reduces it down to a quadratic, which we can then factor by hand, not having to guess and check stuff, okay? So that being said, let's get you guys started on an assignment here, okay? We have some time. 115, yes. Sorry, that, that clock, yeah, I gotta change this. Well, first of all, the clock is an hour back, and you spring forward still. So, even though it says 12, it's all of 12 o'clock, it's really yeah. 1 o'clock. But yeah, it's 115. Coming in out. So, and then 120. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm sorry. I. So, all right, let me get you guys some, some work here to, to try, okay, some practice with this. It's out of the green book. Okay. All right. Does that mean we don't need our upstairs? Correct, you don't need a soft cover book. You will not be getting about to start. That's right, yeah, literally. All right, so, page 366, I'm going to have you guys do a few synthetic energy problems. Okay, so these are just synthetic division, like the first couple problems that we did. Then, these 21 and 23 are factor completely. Okay, so 11, 13, 15, just synthetically divides. 21 and 23, factor completely. Factor completely. All right. 
and that's all I'm going to assign. <coughs> okay. Back to those complete. Complete. Oh.